welcome! In today's video, we are gonna work on this guitar. It's a Harley Benton, and you either know this guitar and what it is because you saw my video about it when I got it, or you can read the title. <laughs> and I've actually been playing this guitar for a while now. Um, I got it last year at some point. Um, maybe it's even a year ago. Actually, since I got it. I don't know. But I like it. I really do. But I've been thinking about things to do to it to make it better so that uh, I like it even more. And in today's video we're gonna add something that I just feel this guitar is missing and that ever since I got it and ever since I started playing it and every time I play it I've just felt like oh why doesn't this guitar have a trem? So we're gonna add the trem. I have the trem right here. And I've gone with the classic Jazz Master thing because this is a Jazz Master guitar and I kind of want to make it look a little bit more Jazz master -y. It's not an actual, you know, perfect Jazz Master. The body is slightly off, which um, if you know anything about guitars, you can tell from a mile away. And since I know everything about guitars. That's a joke, <laughs> obviously, but um, yeah, I had some sort of point. In this video, we're gonna add it. Now, I am gonna use a template. I have made a template right here for the trim, and I'm gonna route it out. If you don't have a router, you can measure out where to do it, and you can just make a hole that is big enough for the block on the back. You know, you see how this fits in there and it can move around a little bit, so it's a, it's not a, an actual perfect fit, it's a little bit bigger. The only thing that matters is that you make sure you don't make, you know, go over the edge here. So that you have room for the screws, but you have room for the temp. I hope that makes sense. And obviously, things like, for example, if you do this with a router, then you can cut into the body and it will be easier. And then if you hand cut it, and also if you hand cut it, you might break the finish so that it, you know, peels away or cracks in a different way. So if you do that, make sure that you find out what you're going to cut out and that you outline the out, um, cutting area. And you carve in with something like a razor blade so that if, you know, you're cutting into the finish and it's starting to crack away, it will get to the breaking point and just snap there instead of, you know trailing off on an adventure of its own. So that's all I'm gonna say about that right now. I would strongly suggest making a template and using a router and doing things the right way immediately. But if you're not there yet where you can do those things, there's always a workaround, a creative way to get where you want to get. And even though I don't want to be that guy to say that, because I know there's a lot of YouTubers, you know, that are showing you how to do things awesome and perfect, but you don't have to make everything always awesome and perfect. If you just want to get, you know, something done and have your guitar have a thing or something, if it's going to be covered up by a pick guard or a trim system or something, it can look kind of ugly underneath, you know? We're all starting out somewhere and uh, just do your best. I have to start off by detuning the guitar because that's always how you do anything you do. You detune. Detune the world we live in and find a way back home to your car. And then we can just take this off. It's super easy, like so. There we have it. And we'll we'll take these out real quick. They were really dirty. I don't know why. What the hell is this? There's some sort of weird grease in these. That's super strange. It smells weird too. Isn't it fun to take guitars apart? You never know what you're doing or what you're getting or how's it going. And I'm just gonna see. Will this trim, for example, cover these up? And obviously I could try to push it up against, but no. There's no point in doing that because they're, they're never going to cover that. So, so I removed that one. And I wish 
I had filmed doing that because I felt like I was He-Man or something, super strong and cool. Because usually <laughs> these are actually kind of hard to get out, but I managed to get them out without any real issue. So I'm going to see if I can do the same thing on this one, but most likely it's not going to be that easy because I'm filming it. So I just grabbed this because you don't want to mess around the finish here because we're not doing a refinish or anything. You, you got to be super careful, but I could, oh, th this was even easier. Damn, I'm strong. I can just pull them out. All I did was screw this in a bit and just jank it right up and get it out. And there it is. And now we're best friends or something. First off, before we do anything, we are gonna super quickly just put down some masking tape so that we have something to work with. So that we, we can draw lines without messing up the finish. Because if we draw lines in the wrong place, then we can either just cross them out or we can remove the tape and put down more tape, which isn't that bad. <laughs> but if we draw with permanent marker or something on our guitar and we mess up or something, and we draw somewhere where we, we shouldn't be drawing, then uh, we can definitely get into dangerous places where we'll have to get a new guitar. So, um, yeah, I'm having the bridge on here because I'm gonna use it to align things, just in case you're wondering. So I haven't really removed the bridge. I mean, I'm, I'm pulling it aside a little bit right now. So there we go. And there we have the bridge and here we have some tape and the center line is going to be somewhere around here because that's the middle of the bridge and that's the strap button right there. So the center line is not going to be here or here. It's going to be roughly somewhere in the middle here, which we're going to try to figure out. But first, I just want to sort of um, eyeball where I want to put this. I've looked at some pictures online of these trims and they are sitting somewhere around there. You have a little bit like half a thumb or something from the edge. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. I think I might push it forward just a little bit or something. Something like that I think. The cavity is for this line here, which means that I need to mark out roughly. Now you could definitely not eyeball this but actually take measurements and things like that to get this to be exactly perfectly where you want it. Um, but I just don't necessarily think that that's worth the effort because I this is not a actual Fender Jazzmaster. This is a Harley Benton version of a Jazzmaster or a J body or whatever they call it, you know. So there's no real point in trying to make everything look exactly perfect because it's not gonna it's not gonna be exactly perfect when you when you look at it. So yeah. Um, just something to think about. I'm gonna true that line up in a little bit. But first, I'm gonna take some measurements and see where um, where the bridge is. See here, there we have the bridge, which is something. And I'm actually, I'm gonna take off the bridge real quick and just go from the inner post thing here instead, I think, and just, I'm gonna remeasure everything a bunch of times. So here we are at, 58.8. Let's divide that. And um, yeah, let's just see if we can if we can make a mark. And obviously I, I didn't make the tape long enough for that. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. Not for me. So right about there. And let's put the bridge back on and see if that makes any sense. And it does. And then let's Let's see if we can find the middle of this strap button here as well. Push it up against the strap button and we have a measurement. Let me take a look at it, please. Uh, 11 mil, or at least almost 11. And we will make a mark and we'll make a mark on the opposite side as well, just to uh, align them. I'm actually gonna be just because this is this is not working out for me the way I wanted to. I'm gonna I'm gonna put an extra tape here, just because. Of course, the one time that I'm putting down too, too many pieces of tape, I'm putting one exactly in the center line, and I want tape where the center line is. I don't want the voidance of tape or whatever. Hopefully, some of you understand what it is I'm saying. But anyway, so yeah, there it is. Let's see if we can redo everything a little bit, just to um, to make sure everything is the way we want it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna measure this out and just do a little bit less 
of a uh, crappy job. There we have it. And uh, here we have a measurement of... Here we put it to 5 point. You have to be really, really careful when you're making a center line or drawing out something like this on something that is actually already made. I, I realize some of you are most likely going, ah, you're overdoing it. You don't, you don't have to care that much. Your, your, your guitar is fine. Just, you know, but the truth is that's not true. You could see if the center line is off by half a mil. And so let's not have it be off by half a mil. I'm going to remove this strap button so that I can draw out the center line and uh, get it over the curvature of the guitar body. There it is out. It's going back in because the I'm actually surprised by how good the strap buttons I got with this guitar, uh, how good they actually are. It's going to be kind of hard for you to see, but just know that it's not hard for me, which is maybe a little bit of a relief to you. I just glued these two pieces together and made sure they were square, but you can use an actual square for this. And I'm sorry if my camera is a little bit blurry. Um, it's not doing what I want it to. Maybe it's time to get a new one. Maybe I shouldn't threaten my camera. So something like that. And then we just continue that line. I'm gonna check it again to make sure it's continuously straight. And then let's put the guitar back in my lap like this. I hope you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna connect these two lines with a ruler on top, like that. And now I'm gonna just take some measurements to see, for example, if I use this, the edge of these holes, for example, that's 46, and this is 45, 6, 7. So, oh, this is gonna be angled, so that's not a real measurement, but I can establish this line, for example, a little bit better using my ruler edge that I have also pre-measured uh, in case anyone wants to know uh, which I did back when I bought it because I make sure that I have tools that I can trust and now I have the back basically of where I want to put my template so I'm gonna put it down like this or something I think where is there you are let me just take a quick look and see how it's supposed to sit yeah this is the this is how it goes. So it will be on the body like this and up against. Now that won't work obviously because you can see this here is in the way. So I'm quickly gonna cut this part off the template because I'd rather do that than actually have to. So there we have a little bit of wiggle room for the template if I cut it right there and then I can push it in there. And the template has lines right here on the inside. So it doesn't just have a line across. It also has a line like that. I also have a line like that, but we're not going to use it because I I did that line because I wanted the center of, of the template that way so that I could measure it out that way and uh, really find it. But I'm, I'm eyeballing this a little bit more just because I feel like it's going to be okay. Let's cut this corner off just so we can push it up. Sometimes you'll have to mod your templates and if you have like expensive templates that you uh, have bought, then make a template out of the template to have a copy of the template and then you can mod that template and cut that template down to size. That's not hard to do. If you already have the template, you already have the template. You can just keep making it, you know. So just do copies of the templates and then modify them and cut them to pieces. But never cut your original template unless you know that you're doing something to it that is always going to be the mod for it. Okay, so here we have the guitar and here we have the template and we can just put it up like this and align it. I don't know how well aligned it looks for you, but you, you have to get a down view like this and make sure that you line everything up. It's good to have a back line, you know, that matches up with this. You can go as crazy as you want to. If you're doing something where you're maybe using the information here to make a copy of a, you know, 1965 uh, Jazzmaster or something, then you should uh, make sure you have all the measurements and everything of that correctly. But this is just a Harley Benton guitar, we're just having fun. We're just uh, being happy and glad and excited about life and stuff like that. So let's not get over boggled down with the details. I'm gonna put it there, that's how it's gonna sit. And 
first I'm gonna put down some double-sided tape and put it everywhere except for on this actual tape here because uh, it's not gonna do much. I might overlap a little bit but it's not that important because this is just tape. But this is then gonna get placed down here, pressed down. I'm, I'm gonna put some clamps on as well and clamp this down. And I'm gonna clamp it down as good as I can to make sure everything is held firmly. We have these two holes here and we're we're gonna try to take care of them after. I might just make some sort of like silver plug things to just, you know, boop them in there so that it looks nicer because we don't want to have just holes. But what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna take my router and route all of this out and hog it away. But before I do that, I'm gonna take my router and I'm gonna go around the edge like this and try to leave as much of the middle. I'm gonna try not to cut the middle is what I'm trying to say. And then I'm gonna try to see if I can lift that off with a chisel, the two first mill or something like that I'll cut. And then I'm gonna try to see if I can lift this up and make little round plugs to plug these holes. So I'll plug these holes with, with dowels and then on the top of the dowels I'll put in a little bit of a thing that is just the first layer of this as a lacquer thing as a sort of moving them around. And we'll see what happens and if it works. But first, let's do some routing. Okay, so I've routed out around and I have this tape here piece and yeah, I'm just gonna go around it and just see if I can break it out without destroying it, or at least that's the idea. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's exactly what I wanted. This basswood is like, it's more cardboard than wood, which I know is a comment someone is gonna go nagging at me over because it's like, cardboard and what is the same thing but someone is gonna be not understand what it is I'm trying to say but anyway okay I'm gonna route this out now and do my very best not to go too deep uh, so that I go through the body because that's not good I'm gonna also first hog out a little bit of wood and that's super easy to do it's not something that I necessarily need to show you how to do I think because I think you all know how to do that, but it's just, you know, drilling into the body like this. So there we go. And now you can see, total mess. Okay, so interesting thing here for the nerds of you guys out there. So this is the masking tape that I put on to draw the center line. And underneath here is the finish of the guitar, right? Uh, or at least if I haven't explained things correctly or in a way that makes sense, that's what this is. And here is just, you know, the chunk that I took out. And if I just lift this like this, I got some masking tape-like thing here on the underside of the lacquer. Isn't that kind of strange? So, if I lift this masking tape, which maybe I shouldn't do, but I'm gonna do it anyway, at least a little bit, I have a piece here that hopefully you can see is the finish of the guitar, but it's also just, you know, a finish on a piece of masking tape, or tape-like, maybe I should say, because it's not necessarily masking tape. So I'm gonna try to break this free without breaking it from this because I don't need to actually... I was gonna plane this down and make it a, even and a little bit of wood so I could glue it in. But now I don't have to do that. I can just I can just um, try to peel it off. So I'll be back once I've figured that out. I've plugged up those holes. I've I thought I pressed record, but I didn't press record, so that's why this is a little bit weird. But I pushed in a bunch of wood glue and I cut a dowel down to the right size, but it's a little, like a mill smaller. So, I, yeah. Sorry. I thought I was recording, but I wasn't recording. Now I'm going to screw down the bridge and leave that glue to dry for a bit. And while that is drying, I'm going to work on trying to cut out little, little circles out of this. It's not going to be perfect because... It's not going to match up completely because this is from 
closer to the burst so it's gonna be a little bit off but I'm hoping that it's gonna be not as off as just having the holes like this but we'll see I might not be able to cut it This is the conclusion I made. I picked out two pieces and I've put some masking tape on them. Here they are. There is one. And here is one. And it's the best pieces and I don't want to ruin them. I don't want to accidentally, you know, do something that I don't want to do. So the masking tape is there to hopefully hold things together a little bit extra good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this washer that I hope you can see it's right there as a template it's the size that I need and so I'm just gonna try to draw around it with a pen onto the masking tape because it's easier to draw on the masking tape than it is to draw on the actual lacquer of the guitar there we have our first template drawn out and there you are to see it and the same thing with this one and then I'm gonna take a scissor and I'm gonna see what happens if I cut into this so I can actually cut into this so I'm going to try to cut these out with the scissor very slowly and gently, going very slow. Try not to cut too close to the line. I'll leave about a mil. And that's just because I don't want to, I really don't want to have to redo this. I can hear how it is cracking a little bit. So I'm cutting very close in on the scissor. I'm not using the tip for this because if I do that, I'm going to break it. But if I use the very furthest in of the scissor, hopefully I'll be safe. I'm going to be honest with you. This is something that I've always thought should be very easy to do, and especially on a guitar that most likely has a fake top. So, yeah, but it but it's not something that I've actually done before. I, this is a first for me, and I really want to experiment and see if this works, because then that means that, you know, repair work and finishing work and stuff like that could potentially become really easy. Another way to do this would be to maybe make a, some sort of, like, I don't know, a photoshopped paper thing that you can just put in and color match in Photoshop but that would be an experiment I do if this fails I feel like so here we have them and before we remove the tape I'm just gonna start sanding to the line the actual line and I'm gonna go super slowly and uh, just I'm gonna go up to the line but not pass it and then I'm gonna match them up and see if they fit in the holes that I've already made the ones that you've seen on the body and if I have to, I'll just go back and forth and sand them down until they fit. And I'm going to try to hold this square so I get a nice even edge that isn't wobbling or anything like that. But that is a good edge uh, to match up with the drill hole. Because the other part, the hole that we're filling, that is factory made. And I'm pretty sure that it's a straight hold as you can see it this is tedious so if you're if you're looking at this and you're wondering how will this be for you then i'm gonna say it's tedious but it's not that bad it goes fairly quick this is very thin and so you just have to be delicate i'll be back real soon okay so here they are and now i just need to take off the masking tape because obviously what we want to do is align the grain hopefully you can see that it it has the grain in it and I know that some of you probably are thinking this is a bit overboard, but if this looks like 90% there, then it's a lot easier than the alternatives that you have, which is, for example, you know, repainting the guitar or trying to match it up with paint. Okay, so here we have the guitar. And first off, I'm just going to try to see which one would be the best. You know, I'm not going to plop them in because I'm going to have a hard time getting them getting them out but I'm gonna hold them up and just move them about and I think this one up 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 that bit I have something I can poke you with so get you get you up oh, there we go I think maybe yeah that that's gonna be that yes and so we just take some super glue and we just flood the area and we align it and we press it into place and we hold it down try to align the grain as best as you can like so and just hold it there for a second and while I'm holding that down I'm also gonna 
just flood this one as well and just plop that in and press it in. and I'm just gonna hold them there for five minutes it is super glue so it will dry quickly but it's really hard to get in a clamp there and you don't want to press down with like a hard clamp or something that would leave a mark so yeah we're just gonna do it like that and now they're in place okay so here we have it now and as you can see it looks a little bit wonky right there because it broke but you know that's the way it is sometimes you just you gotta roll with the punches even if they are really hard and uh you don't like it but i'm just gonna sand this back a little bit to sort of flatten it out and even it out a little bit so i just have some 1200 grit and a flat piece of wood and i'm just going back and forth like this okay so they're leveled and smooth and you can basically not feel them and here I have my drill and a little buffing wheel and I'm just gonna just gonna see if I can make the area less dull because it's a little bit dull and I want to see if I can get back some of the shine and I'll just look at it in the in the light and sort of see you know I need a little bit more just going back and forth okay so now I can just screw these back in and attach the bridge and we can put some strings on it as well okay so everything is good i have the strings on everything is the way i'd like it to be except that you can kind of a little bit see that it's right there i hung the guitar on the wall a part of me is like you know it's actually pretty good because it looks kind of more vintage like doing this and then having a little bit of uh, of a relic going or something could be really cool i think but we can also try to just mix together some paint and see if we can do a little bit of a color match you know and just get a thing going and i know i'm being a little bit maybe a little bit too sloppy right now just gonna smudge in a bit of paint right there and trying to get it in there and match everything up and i'll clean it off uh, the the excess same thing up here just you know get a little bit going and remove the excess just uh, get that uh, edge to disappear and once i've uh, gotten it to work the way i want it to and that's why i have the masking tape here by the way which maybe some of you realized <laughs> once i've gotten it to work the way i want it to and i have a paint uh, f f a color that i like but um i don't know if you need to see me sit here and match paint because th there isn't going to be a way for me to do that uh, so it benefits you basically that's the end of this video Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to do something a little bit different now. And instead of showing you close-ups, because you can obviously tell where the finished thing that I've done is, I'm going to play a little bit of guitar, show off the whammy, and you can just uh, try to see if you can spot it. Because this is not a perfect way of fixing the guitar. It's something that would uh, be best suited as a repair thing. And you would get uh, pretty close. If you want something perfect, you're going to have to refinish the guitar. And I'm not going to do that. At least not in this video. Maybe down the line if I have some other idea. But anyway, that's another video. I'm going to go play the guitar now for you. And I'll see you then. Uh, over there. Uh, playing the guitar. And try to spot it. And see if you can do it. Whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm really tired. I need to go. <laughs> and I still have things to film. So, uh, that's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay awesome and cool and go and install whatever thing you need to install on whatever guitar you have and hopefully it works out. I want to say this might seem like it was a lot of work and really hard, but it was actually super easy and super simple. And so yeah, it might come across as more work than it actually is, but that's because it's two things you have to do. You have to install the actual tram and you have to fill the holes. But for example, filling the holes took it just took a couple of minutes it was not hard at all go do your things and i'm i'm gonna play this guitar that i'm holding right here right now and i'm gonna just go